Hey beautiful people, what is up? And welcome back to another video. Today I feel like I have such a good inspirational video for everyone. You can take a little bit away or a lot away just depending on what you're looking to be inspired by. I have zero spend pantry meal inspiration ideas where I went through my pantry and just picked out a lot of items we really needed to use up. I feel like a lot of you are probably like me where you have items that need used because even if you have emergency items, you need to rotate your stock. So hopefully I'm catching you at the end of no spend January and I'll inspire you a little bit to use some things you have to save on your grocery budget for February. These are all just pantry staple ideas. I I actually went through Google and just typed in random things like pantry ingredients only meals using garbanzo beans. I will link all three of the recipes that I'm using from Pinterest down in the description box below, but I'm also gonna type out what I did because I used what I had on hand and didn't go purchase anything else. I also have some really inspiring clean with me here in our new house and a little bit of organization and some affordable decor as well because I'm starting to slowly implement a little bit of decorating into our home. So there's a lot happening today. Let's jump in first with the pantry meals. I'm super excited with how these meals turned out. Plus, I have a brand new gluten-free bread recipe that is phenomenal. It's a must make. You have to give it a try. It's a little, I feel like out of the ordinary for what I would expect for a bread recipe, but it's so good. And we had it with the dinner that I'm sharing with you from the pantry meals. So let's get started. time here on YouTube or Instagram, I am obsessed with using the same ingredients over and over and over, especially pantry staples. So here we pulled out some instant coffee, cocoa, egg substitute, which by the way, you don't need. You could use applesauce or omit it altogether, some almond flour. And I forgot to share with you the um, cane sugar, but we, we added it in because I tasted the cookies before I put them in the oven. If you don't like sweet cookies, you could definitely omit it. These cookies were phenomenal. I had them for breakfast this morning. I shared on Instagram. They're like a cake-like cookie, which I'm here for. I really like moist, soft cookies. They're so easy to make, and I feel like because of the ingredients, you could use whatever you have on hand. You could switch flours if you wanted to, if you wanna do a gluten-free flour, if you are gluten-free, if you're not, you could just use a regular flour. Instead of almond flour, you could use a coconut flour. You could omit the instant coffee if you just wanna do cocoa, or you could do a peanut butter spin and use like a powdered peanut butter. I feel like these cookies give you so many options. And if you don't have pumpkin puree, because I know some countries don't sell that in a can, you could use bananas, you could use sweet potatoes, squash, applesauce. Again, I feel like you have so many options. I did find this recipe, I'll link it down below. I'll also type out what I did, because I feel like these are just a staple. Like we can all make these no matter what we have on hand. And I'm here for those types of recipes to use up ingredients, but also to stretch our grocery budget a little bit to use what we have on hand and then maybe save us a little bit of money in the long run. I ended up making 18 cookies. I kind of tried the dough a little bit while I was making it. So it would have been 18. You see 17 here. Baked them at 350 degrees for 19 minutes. They were perfection when they came out of the oven. I stored them in just a Tupperware container once they had cooled, and I actually stored mine in the refrigerator so I could eat them cold or warm. Like I said, I had them for breakfast many days in a row. I had them for snack. I had them as a post run, as a pre run. They're so good. I've now made two batches. I'm here for them. I hope you give them a try and take me over on Instagram when you do and let me know what you think. I have 
had really low expectations for this gluten-free bread, but holy moly, it blows my mind how phenomenal it is and so easy to make. I will type out what I did compared to the recipe because I did change things up a little bit based on what I had on hand. And I'm gonna keep saying that to inspire you to be creative. Sometimes recipes are meant to be broken, meant to kind of substitute what you have on hand, but this was an almond flour recipe. So flavorful, so delicious. I cannot get over how good this bread was. And I feel like it doesn't take any like really specialty ingredients minus the almond flour. But I feel like now it's 2022, we can find almond flour everywhere. Even like Walmart and Aldi has it. So I feel like it's not really a specialty item anymore. And it's really inexpensive overall. Even like price comparison to like, I'm saying like gluten-free flours. Gluten-free flours are a little bit spendy but this was so delicious. It was super crispy on the top and then really moist in the inside. You are gonna uh, pre-bake your baking dish when you are preheating your oven, just like you would with like any bread recipe that I've shared here on my channel. And then I domed it with a piece of foil. I was gonna cook it in my Dutch oven, but I kind of wanted to share you know, something different and share with you guys if you don't have a Dutch oven, you could do it this way. So good, I can't wait to share with you what we did with it with the dinner recipe here in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. so delicious and I just want to quickly say you can use any veggies that you have on hand in your crisper that you want to use up. I had a little bit of an onion, some baby carrots, a pepper that was kind of getting wilty, a lemon. I feel like we all have lemons in our crispers. Let me know if you're like me. I like buy lemons with intention to use them for like drinking water and stuff and then they just kind of sit there so I always have to find a way to use them up. And then everything else is just like seasonings, green beans, and some brown rice. I rarely, rarely, rarely use brown rice. My husband loves brown rice more than white. It tends to like not sit well in my stomach, but I was reading if I rinse it really, really well and then also like cook it for a little bit longer to kind of like soften up, it should help. I didn't have any issues with this one, so hopefully I cooked it correctly and I can eat brown rice. I don't know. I also think too, I didn't know I had gluten problems until I had my blood tested back in October. I get a lot of questions over that. I don't share a lot to do with gluten because I'm not a professional. I went to a professional to have blood work done, did a little bit of research and digging and finding out why I had tummy issues. And it could be a gluten thing too because I was eating so much gluten at the time that maybe the brown rice was just kind of not absorbing, digesting, etc. So of course you can use any veggies you have on hand. You could add some fresh garlic in here. I'm just using, I don't know what kind of pot this is called, but like just a pot, like a short pot, medium pot, I don't know. And I decided to go ahead and add my veggies first to kind of saute them. I don't cook with oil. If you cook with oil, you would add oil. I just do water and I added some veggie broth. Sometimes I make my own veggie broth. I happen to have a couple of these packets on hand that I really wanted to use up because I don't like things to spoil. It's just concentrated veggie broth. I got it with a meal kit service and I didn't end up using this one or the one last night for the bread and I knew I could use them 
because I use everything on hand. I like to use all the little scraps and everything. For my homemade veggie broth, I typically save all my scraps from my veggies and then put it in my pressure cooker covered with water and I cook it for one hour. I can type that recipe out and leave it in the description box below. If I forget, so kindly remind me in the comments and I will drop it in there because sometimes I do forget to add the recipes. But I added my rice once the veggies were all cooked to my liking and then let that sit for what seemed like a decade because brown rice takes forever to cook. gosh I wish you guys had smell a vision I wish you guys could taste this meal so good the lemon just really adds to it and I feel like a lot of us have lemons like in our like pantry crispers you know like in your fridge so highly recommend and then I'm serving it with a piece of this gluten-free bread which this is the last piece because I've been snacking on it it's so flavorful it's so good I definitely would not have thought an almond like flour bread would be this good like just a side of green beans all just pantry staples using up ingredients that I have in the fridge. This meal is so good. I feel like it would also make a really good meal prep if you didn't want to do it for a dinner. Highly recommend giving this a try. The recipe is down below. Go snag it. And I will type out what I did so you guys kind of have an idea of the changes I made. But yes, please. This is such a delicious meal. And I feel like it made a lot for only having like one cup of rice and a cup and a half of chickpeas. I mean, that's a pretty good sized pan. So so delicious. I am so excited to share with you guys this project. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have already saw my reel, but this set I actually got from my friend Lauren as a housewarming gift. She sent me so many thoughtful gifts, like literally my whole kitchen game has been upgraded thanks to her. So they come with two different sets. This is the, the labels you can put on the top and it comes with a marker, which I use these in my pantry. I wish I would have continued filming this day. I did so many small projects and completely forgot to film my pantry redo, but you're gonna have clips of that coming in another video soon. So here's the little set, so easy to put together. I like how it aesthetically looks more pleasing than the plastic bottles. Plus I can now get the refills for these at Winco in the bulk section and then I don't have to worry about buying any more plastic. Two questions I had over on Instagram, one, how do you keep track of expiration dates? Simple, those little um, black labels, you could use those or you could just mark them on the bottom yourself with like a little sticker and a marker, really easy to do. Or you can be like me and not really care and feel like seasonings never really go out of date because they have a really long shelf life. Plus I will probably use them up by the time they expire. Because if you cook a lot like I do, you kind of just know when things you know need tossed or used up really quickly and you don't let things expire. That's one of the reasons I don't keep a lot of stock of anything in my kitchen. The other question I had is, do you like them? Yes, oh my gosh, yes. They also come with the little tabs on the top so you can pour a little bit, like sprinkle or pour, they're wonderful. I actually threw these in my dishwasher before using them and I felt like they were super high quality. After I put the stickers on them, I won't be able to obviously throw them in my dishwasher. So the bottom part of my seasoning shelf, I feel like looks amazing. I'm gonna work on the other two shelves. As you can still see, I have a couple 
uh, the seasoning still there. I think it had an Italian and a basil, which I must have purchased for another meal video to have on hand and then didn't use them. And then like my salt and some other seasonings I would like to put into glass jars. I like glass. Um, when I was sharing over on Instagram, if you don't follow me, you should because I post a lot of fun reels. But I did share that I like to use glass in my pantry and a couple people are like, oh, I don't like to use glass, it's so heavy. Glass is just more sustainable than plastic. Plastic is going to wear out. Plus for glass, I feel like you can use a lot of reusable components and I just love that. quick run to start the dishwasher. I am off to the races starting my kind of weekend routine. You're going to see my husband here in a little bit. This is our routine together and I feel like there's no better way to film things than be in real life. So I personally hate to vacuum. I don't know what it is. It's like monotonous to me but thank you lord I married a man who loves to vacuum. So he was actually doing something upstairs I didn't film every single chore that we did, but I did start out with vacuuming. And if you're curious, I got this vacuum for 90% off at Lowe's. Yes, Lowe's, like the home improvement store. We were like there picking something up for our garage. I think it was our garage storage shelves and I needed a vacuum, a cordless one for my hardwood floor. And I walked by this one, I was like, wait a second, what? It was a $330 vacuum and I got it 90% off and it's amazing. It's so, so good. So you'll see here that I'm kind of just going through my day cleaning and here comes my husband and he's like, okay, babe, I got you. He loves to vacuum. He also vacuumed it upstairs. Also, tell me if you've seen that reel that goes around that's like when there's donuts in the break room. I was trying to joke with him about that and walk like that. He was like, I've never seen it. So anyways, we start out vacuuming and then I mopped. I have some reusable mops that I use on my Swiffer. I love them. I got them on Amazon a long time ago because we haven't had carpet in years. So I just got a Swiffer and then I soak them, spray them. I think they're amazing. They're great for the bathroom. I will try to find them and link them down below. Like I said, they're from Amazon. It's kind of funny to me how I don't like to vacuum, but I love to mop. Tell me down below what your favorite chore is and I'll keep telling you some of mine and you'll see some of them here as I continue to clean with you. This may or may not come as a surprise, but both my husband and I love to do laundry. I decided to film him this day because he had already started a couple of loads before I caught the filming action. But like I said, I wanted to make this really real life. A lot of times during the week, he does laundry and then I do weekend laundry. And then we both sweep and mop and tidy. And it's just, we have a really good routine down for the two of us. It took a little while to get a routine in our new home because there's a lot more space to clean, but we're not like living in the whole home, if that makes sense, but you still have to clean it. And then this is like the only room that's really set and decorated. It's the first one we started on. It's our master. I love it. The lamps I painted, I shared reels with those over on Instagram, and then the side um, dressers I also painted and redid. Super easy, budget friendly. I feel like it was a great way to use what I had. And then we did purchase the bed. I love it. It's also from Amazon. I, we really needed a new bed and I didn't want to bring our old one over because it didn't really match the aesthetics of our new house. I know that's weird, but for me, I wanted to make this space just like our dream home. So here is our favorite part of our whole house. As funny as it is, this nine foot shower is to die for. I feel like if you're going to spend money building a home or redoing a home, do the features that you know are luxurious and that you're going to love. For us, that was our kitchen, our master, our bathroom, um, our floor, just all those things that we knew that like you can redo those in time. But I mean, it's just so nice to walk into a new home and have those 
great items. I did want to quickly also say the uh, stone in the back of my shower, not tile, it's stone, is quartz. It's the exact same as my countertops. And I only clean that once a week and I didn't clean it this day because I was already wearing like nice clothes. But typically I will scrub it down and then I will shine it. And I, I mean, I found like a good routine for it. I feel like it only takes a couple minutes. As long as you take care of your stone, I feel like it looks beautiful forever. I will say I will probably not be someone who is deep cleaning my house all the time. A friend of mine actually is looking for work because her husband got laid off for a while because of the pandemic and she actually cleans homes for a living and I was telling my husband like we should definitely get her over here because we are so busy. It would be really nice to just do like tidies on the weekend and then have someone deep clean for us. So this project is something I could not wait to share with you guys. I didn't post an Instagram reel yet, but I have one. So this is our bathroom. And as you can see, it doesn't have a shower rod right there. We got shower rods with our builder for both our guest slash downstairs bathroom, which is this one, and then our upstairs bathroom as well. But they don't fit. It was really weird. I asked multiple times, hey, can you give me a new shower rod? This one doesn't fit. And then it's like they kept giving me the same shower rod because it didn't fit. It didn't size like most shower rods twist so you can size them. No, it was just like a one size fit all, but it didn't fit. I went to Lowe's trying to find something to make it work. I couldn't. So I ended up purchasing a new shower curtain. So this bathroom, I love the color aesthetics. I love the floor with the gray and the white. And I didn't want to do too much to it, but I kind of want to make it pop with a little bit of my own personality. I will say some of the items for this bathroom decor did not arrive in time for this video, so I might have to do a little mini update with you guys at some point. But above the toilet, I do have a shelf coming because I thought I would add a little bit extra storage for my guests, especially if they want to put like their overnight items in there, they have a space for them. But I actually found what I needed at Home Goods for the shower and I was so happy to see that they had something in the color I was looking for. Otherwise, I probably would have ordered it on Amazon or got it at Bed Bath & Beyond. But I paid like $6 for the shower curtain, I think $12 for the shower rod, and it was the appropriate one. Hallelujah for that because, like I said, I couldn't make the other ones work. I will take this down and wash it and iron it. I just wanted to see what it would look like. I also got the little shower hooks for like $3 at Home Goods, And then the basket and the towels I fell in love with. I think overall I spent about $35 or $40 redoing this bathroom. I am going to add, like I said, a shelf and more towels and then like maybe a tiny bit of decor. You're going to see as I continue to share with you kind of like furnished home tour, I don't really like decor. Like I don't like things on my walls. I don't like a lot of like plants and knickknacks. I'm just not that person. I like things to be very simple and clean and I feel like it makes your rooms look bigger. But I really love this basket idea for a couple of reasons. I know that this is a smaller bathroom so I can put this basket in our guest room and then when we have guests over I can say hey here's your towels and then they can put them in the bathroom as they need them like they can have them in there. Um, I also am going to add more towels. I did order some white like really large like extra large shower towels to also put in there so there's some extra towels as well but I really like that idea so then also after my guests leave they can just you know throw all their towels in that basket when they're dirty and then I can carry them upstairs so it kind of works as a double it can be a laundry basket and a towel basket and I just loved how this looked so much I feel like that yellow really pops with the gray and I literally it makes me so excited to kind of decorate the rest of my home and share it with you guys because this one little tiny part turned out perfect enjoyed today's video it was so fun for me to make let me know down in the comments below if you like this kind of full encompass video of cooking cleaning decorating and a little bit of organizing because that is kind of what I'm doing on weekends now as a whole I do a little bit at a time and I just have been loving it here in our new home plus don't forget I will do a furnished home video probably in the next month or so because our furniture is on its way but it's not here yet it's kind of like i feel like when you guys ever order something and the united postal service delivers it where it says like your item has shipped and then you keep tracking it and then it just says your item has shipped and then all of a sudden it's like 
you know, at your doorstep, you never got any like tracking or anything, you know what I'm saying, like updates. That, that's about how I feel about our furniture right now. But if you would, I would really love if you take a quick second, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you Thursday in a really fun video. I actually have a collab with two of my bestest friends here on YouTube. We're gonna share some really amazing Valentine dinner date recipes, so stay tuned for Thursday's video, and I'll see you then. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.